strange purple bubble drifts onto the shore. It looks harmless, unremarkable. But then another appears, and another. Within hours they arrive by the hundreds, then thousands. The coastline is swarmed, an invasion has begun by something that wasn't quite a jellyfish, but worse. Over the course of a single weekend, more than 3,000 people were stung. Some walked away with painful rashes, others required emergency medical treatment. The entire beach was shut down as lifeguards scrambled to protect swimmers from the invisible threat. And if you watched our previous video, you'd know that this man of war isn't just another beach nuisance. Its venom-filled tentacles can cause searing pain, large welts, nausea, and even allergic reactions in some people. And it's not only dangerous to humans. Most marine animals avoid it at all costs. Even sharks have been observed steering clear of its tentacles. But while thousands were fleeing the beaches, someone was swimming towards it. But this wasn't a person. It was Glaucus Atlanticus, the blue sea slug. This tiny indecent creature doesn't just survive contact with the Portuguese man of war. It hunts it, eats it, and then steals its weapon. But how does something so fragile withstand a sting that shuts down entire beaches? How does it absorb the man of war's most dangerous weapon without being destroyed by it? And how do they use that venom against the rest of the ocean? Glaucus Atlanticus, at first glance, doesn't look like much of a threat. It's small, just about an inch long, floating upside down near the surface of the water like some weird drifting leaf. When looking at these two creatures, the battle looks heavily one-sided. You have the man of war. The predator that fends off sharks can grow up to 160 feet long, including its tentacles, and was the sole cause for the multiple Australian beach shutdowns of 2019. And the other side has a one inch long slug. It's got no armor, no claws, and no venom of its own. You could literally beat this creature by accidentally stepping on it with your shoe. So how exactly is this the creature that takes down the man of war? Both of these creatures are strategic drifters, meaning they ride the ocean currents to move. The man of war, a floating colony of specialized organisms working together has a gas-filled bladder, or pneumatophore, that keeps it bobbing on the surface. A built-in sail catches the wind for it to move. Interestingly, some man of wars have sails that lean left, while others lean right. This helps populations spread out reducing the chances of them all being beached at once. The blue sea slug takes a different approach. Instead of floating belly down like most sea creatures, it clings to the surface upside down, using the water's surface tension to stay afloat. Its body is perfectly shaped to ride the ocean's movement, and with no control over where it goes, it simply drifts until it finds a man of war to prey on. When it gets close, it latches on with its tiny but powerful jaws, clamping down on the man of war's soft body. But it doesn't go straight for the main body. It targets the tentacles first, biting off pieces of the venomous strands as if they were harmless strands of seaweed. The slug works its way through the stingers section by section, carefully avoiding any overwhelming dose of venom. The man of war doesn't fight back. It can't. Without a brain or nervous system capable of detecting what's happening, it simply drifts helplessly as the slug strips away its defenses. Each bite means fewer stinging cells, less venom, and more control for the blue sea slug. But how does it survive consuming what should be a direct dose of Man of War's venom? The Portuguese Man of War is designed for one thing, delivering pain through venom. Its tentacles lined by thousands of microscopic harpoon-like stinging cells called nematocysts are loaded with the venom. It can paralyze prey or cause excruciating pain to anything that touches it. When the blue sea slug bites into a Portuguese man of war, it doesn't actually take the hit from the venom. Its body is coated in a special mucus layer that helps contain stinging cells before they even fire. On top of that, its skin is tougher than it looks, giving it an extra layer of protection. 
This combination lets the slug devour the tentacles without suffering the burning pain that most creatures experience. But it doesn't just get rid of the venom. As it feeds on the man of war, it carefully moves the stinging cells through its digestive system without triggering them, a feat that scientists still don't fully understand. It then stores the most potent ones inside tiny finger-like structures on its back, called serrata. Not all stinging cells are equally dangerous, and the blue sea slug actually manages to select the strongest ones and then concentrates them. This means that the venom inside the blue sea slug can sometimes be even stronger than what the Portuguese man of war originally had. Any predator thinking this tiny slug is an easy meal is in for a painful mistake. The moment they take a bite, they get hit with a highly concentrated dose of the saved up venom, even worse than what the man of war would have done. This is why the blue sea slug has almost no natural predators. Most animals that encounter it quickly realize it's not worth the risk. Most ocean drifters at the surface are easy pickings for predators. Jellyfish, small fish, and plankton often don't stand a chance if something wants to eat them. But because of the venom that Glaucus atlanticus hijacks, it's one of the only surface-dwelling creatures that doesn't need to run. The striking blue and silver pattern on the slug is also an incredible camouflage trick. From above, the blue side blends seamlessly with the ocean water, making it harder for birds to spot. From below, the silver underside reflects the sunlight, helping it disappear against the bright surface. Even if something did want to eat them, it might not even be able to find it. But because the blue sea slug is a tiny, vibrant blue creature, we curious humans cannot help to pick them up. There actually have been multiple cases of beachgoers getting stunned after mistaking the slug for a harmless curiosity. One of the most well-documented incidents happened in 2023, when a marine enthusiast picked up several blue sea slugs along the coast. Within moments, he was in excruciating pain experiencing burning sensations and nausea, he ended up needing hospital treatment. A clear reminder that some of the ocean's most beautiful creatures are also the most dangerous. Even if the slug is washed up on shore and looks lifeless, its venom can still be active. So while it might be tempting to touch one, the best thing to do is admire it from a safe distance. By targeting the Portuguese man of war, the slug faces virtually no competition for food. It gains nourishment and defense in a single strike, repurposing venom into a shield that keeps even would-be predators away. Its upside-down floating behavior keeps it perfectly positioned near its drifting prey, while its vibrant coloring offers both camouflage and a warning to anything that gets too close. Nothing else even wants to get near the slug's food, let alone eat it. This evolutionary strategy Stealing and repurposing another organism's weapon may seem rare, but it's actually part of a broader trend. In the rainforests, some poison dart frogs don't create their own toxins. They extract them from the insects they eat. Certain snakes that prey on toxic toads have developed immunity to their venom. If the Portuguese man of war continues to evolve more potent venom, it's likely the blue sea slug will evolve in step adapting to store and deploy it more effectively. Evolution, after all, doesn't stop. It just shifts with opportunity. So far, the blue sea slug seems to be the only creature to specialize in this kind of venom theft from the man of war. But nature is always changing. Who knows? Maybe somewhere else in the deep sea, we'll discover another case of an animal taking someone else's weapons and using it as their own.